So the last question I had wasn't one that I'd written down, but it's just something that I think of sometimes, which is that basically um, I think of myself as basically an Arminian universalist as far as people would allow okay. those terms to fit together. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I think um, so as far as I understood Wesley's understanding of the fall and such, each person, when they're born, they're born innocent of, of uh, not of original sin per se, but of um, guilt of the bringing guilt upon themselves until they sin consciously right and it's not predestined for any person when that's going to happen but it's sort of it's somehow and ine mysteriously inevitable that each person is going to sin even though pervenient grace is at work right and so i thought well why wouldn't it be somehow mysteriously inevitable that someday everyone if god right. keeps working in right. people's lives would come to right. accept his grace and i i don't know what, what I, I'm just curious. This isn't even for this video, but I'm just curious. What would you say about that? That Arminian understanding of if, if somehow everybody with libertarian free will yeah. is going to sin, why not somehow everybody with libertarian free will someday, not at a predetermined specific point, but someday right. each person right. would be redeemed. Yeah. So, so again, there is no specific view among open theists mm -hmm. on universal um, reconciliation uh, with God. Uh Pinnock and I, Clark Pinnock and I, wrote books on the issue of those who've never heard of Christ, can, can, can they be saved? Um, actually, before open theism, we, we were writing that. <clears throat> um, but free will theists have always wrestled with this. And uh, universal salvation was popular in the early church, in the Eastern church. After Augustine in the Western church, it's like, nope, can't hold that. So until... Protestantism came along, there were very few universalists uh, in the Western church, but it's always been common in the Eastern church. Um, <clears throat> and why, why couldn't, could an open theist uh, hold to hopeful universalism? Oh, of course. Not, not, not that they have to, but there's nothing in, logically incompatible between open theism and a hopeful universal salvation. No. It, uh, I don't see anything incompatible with any kind of uh, free will theism and universal salvation. And it just surprises me that <clears throat> universal salvation view in the last decade has just exploded. Maybe it's the internet, what, whatever. It's just become so much more discussed. Um, uh, 20 years ago, <laughs> I was like, Nobody's really talking about this. In fact, I wanted to edit a book with InterVarsity Press on uh, multiple views. I wanted to include universal salvation. And the press said, no, it's not really you know, an acceptable evangelical view. And so we published three views, not four. <laughs> oh, it was for that three views book? Three views on the people who haven't heard? Yes, yeah. Oh, okay. I like that book, yeah, but... It, um... Yeah, it was probably before they would have let you do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so what, you know, many, not all universal salvation people do is, is to say, well, it's possible that after death, God continues working. God doesn't give up. So um, uh, Pinnock talked about, and Donald Blesch, who was one of my professors, said it's not a second chance. It's, you know, it's a first chance for many people. But, but I've asked the question, and this is going off topic of what you want to <laughs> You know, people, what do you mean a first chance? When has someone really encountered Jesus truly? Um, especially people who suffered abuse by church leaders, uh, priests, youth group leaders. And, and you say, have they really experienced the love of God? And what they filter it through is those experiences. Um, I'm really sympathetic to those people, you know, whether they've heard or not. So anyway, the, answer, the short answer to your question is open theists can affirm hopeful universalism. Yes. Yeah. And well, I definitely believe in like postmortem opportunity. So that's right. sort of why I thought that I think was his name, Gabriel Fra Factor. Factor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he did that, but his was specifically for people who hadn't had a chance Right. Now, and I think you can reasonably expand it to, oh, uh, to people. Easily. With, you, yeah. Yes. You, you can okay. just say, uh, uh, God doesn't give up. Yeah. I think that's, but I know I don't want to get, I don't want to bother you too much with specificity, but I am wondering 
if, if you do think that everybody will sin at one point, as most Armenians do, do, do you think it's a reasonable um, claim to make on the other side of that, that everybody will, you know, if somehow mysteriously everybody will sin at one point, why not somehow mysteriously everyone will? Yeah, so that, yeah for me, it goes back to the confidence you have in God's love. Yeah, I have a lot of confidence. <laughs> yes, I have a lot of confidence. <laughs> yes. and, and so if you believe, now, because I believe in libertarian freedom, and I think that we can act irrationally. So here's a debate that I've had with uh, Thomas Talbot. So he's you know, written extensively on this one. And he thinks that everyone, if they're fully informed and rational, will make a choice for God. I, I'm just not so sure. I don't, I don't know. Humans aren't fully rational. And, and so maybe God ha would have to change something you know, for Hitler to say, what? You, you want me? <laughs> To respond to grace to that Jew, Jesus? <laughs> you know, I think that would be a hard pill for him to swallow. Yeah. But I'm confident in God's abilities. But I don't know that it's a guarantee, but I'm really confident. Did, oh, did you write an essay in that book, um, for, um, yeah. The Current it's, Debate? Uh, um, yes. Universalism, The Current Debate. Okay, you were one of the, Yeah, I read that book a long time ago. And then I read... Talbot, I love Talbot. I interviewed yeah. him in person. But yeah, it is kind of hard because it's kind of hard to argue, though, because he says, like, well, even Satan, you know, he must right. be trapped by some kind of ignorance because the part of the reason he's rebelling is because he actually thinks he can accomplish something, which is obviously right. a sign of ignorance. And you go, well, right. technically that's true, but it does make it sound like all of our moral, it makes it sound like our morality is tied to our knowledge almost. Yes. And that yeah. goes back to Plato. Uh, Socrates, no, no one knowingly does an evil. I'm like, yeah, uh, like, no, no, I, I disagree. I think the Christians overall disagreed with that view, yeah. that Platonic view. Um, and, and so uh, Talbot could argue that, well, God would you know, overturn our irrationality. That's a, th a move I think he would have to make. And I can see that. I just don't know. Yeah. Well, thanks so much. That's, um, everything and I'll, I'll send you the video once it's done it's going to be a long time probably probably a few months but i'll, I'll okay. let you know